Hey kids, how's everything out there in YouTube land today? Fun stuff going on here. Unpacking video. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily, let's go feed. Oh. Dogs are barking outside. <clears throat> Old Plooch. Old Pluto's outside barking. He very much wants us to come out and play. But we got work to do now. Okay. Baker Creek Seed Company. Got my shipment of some seeds that we ordered from them. It's like they've got shelves advertised here on the back, I guess. I don't know. Huh. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, baby. Okay, under the recommendation of uh, Jess over at uh, Roots and Refuge, we got some Dr. White Cheese. Dr. White Cheese tomatoes. Let's check those out. Okay, we got some Consoluto Florentines. Uh, focusing in, there we go, okay. And Jana wanted some big boy tomatoes for uh, putting up pasta sauce. And uh, she thought these would be good, a good Italian tomato. We shall see, we shall see. Okay, I got some classic Amish paste. Those should do well. I got some Chinese chives. We got a little herb action going on. Minnesota midget melons. I've got some parsnips. I like to take parsnips, turnips, and rutabagas and add that to carrots, onions, and potatoes when I make my beef stew. To me, it adds a certain flavor. Something my mom did, I just think it adds a certain flavor. Uh, so I want to grow my own parsnips and, and other stuff. Okay, we got some, I don't know if I'm saying this right, choga beets. Choga beets, these are the red and white striped uh, ones when you cut them open. I'm looking forward to pickling some of those. Some bok choy. We got some bok choy going in. Some Utah tall uh, melon. No celery. It's a picture of a melon on the package, but it's it's the Utah tall celery. Cool. Okay. Rober cauliflower. Waltham 29 broccoli. Boy, there's a standard for you. Some green beauty peas. Looking forward to some peas. M more Minnesota midget melons. I don't know why I got two of those, but some Boston pickling cubes. Some Brunswick cabbage. Mammoth melting sugar peas. Man, I love sugar peas. You know the little the little sugar pies and stuff and stir fries and. Actually, I like to just, you know, steam them in a little butter, in a little water, put a little butter on them. Oh, good. Good, good, good stuff. So, Danber Half Long Carrots, one of my all-time favorites. Some Purple Potted, Purple Potted Pole Beans. Say that ten times fast, huh? Purple Potted Pole Beans, Purple Potted Pole Beans, Purple Potted Pole Beans. Some Detroit Dark Red Beets. Those are classics. Australian brown onion. Now, I don't know about these seeds. Being able to get these in the ground now and being able to harvest them this late in the year, I don't know. <clears throat> I usually start plants indoor 8 to 12 weeks in advance of planting out. I don't know if these are going to make it. I did order some slips. I got some onion slips coming too. So hopefully that will save me. Some classic Long Island improved Brussels sprouts. Some black cherry tomato. What else we got here? Some Cherokee purple tomato. Now, Georgia Southern collard greens. Now these were specifically requested by my daughter-in-law. So we're growing these for her. Some, uh, okay, I got these and I didn't tell Johanna. I got some Rom Rom Romanesco broccoli. Um, Johanna wanted to stick with just tried and true kind of stuff. I slipped this one in because I wanted to try it. Some Rosarita eggplant, and last but not least, some big purple top turnips. Oh so, wow, good, good stash. Now in addition to that, I have a drawer full of stuff in here where I've got 
I've got carrots and I've got corn and I've got my own seeds where I've been starting some squish and uh, tumbling tom tomatoes and some uh, some peppers some green bell peppers and stuff and then I have in my little container here my seed my seed vault I got a bunch of other stuff that we're also starting some scallop squash I love the scallop squash when I was a kid growing up, we would get that in the garden and stuff. Mom would grow that. And it, it's always been a favorite of mine. So I like the scallop squash. Some short and sweet carrots. Now we raised these last year and they were short. Sweet, but they were short. I got some French breakfast radish, some cherry radish. Um, got some Kentucky Wonder uh, beans. Lily, quit knocking into the camera tripod, please. Some basil, some lettuce, um, different, types, different types of lettuce, a few different types of lettuce. I don't even know what that one is. Cucumber, straight eggs. We grew those last year. They did really well. Um, some other lettuces that didn't do particularly well, but we'll try that again. So Here's what I do. When I open a package, like these are seeds that we used last year, I roll them down tight, put a little clip on there for storage so all right got some uh oregon sugar pods some more sugar pod peas these just came to the day i ordered these some jalapenos for for uh Gahanna, she wanted them some zooks i got some zucchinis here some yellow crookneck some other watermelon little teeny tiny lettuce seeds and then i've got some stuff that i collected myself some green beans and some other stuff so I've got this like awesome stash of seeds going, which I'm really thrilled about. But in addition to that, as you can see here by my table, I've already got stuff going. So let's take a look at that. There you go. Okay, first thing we're going to look at in here, growing in these Grodan starter cubes, I have little lettuces sprouted up. See the little lettuces back there? That's actually... Uh, well, that's lettuces, I think, and some tumbling tom tomatoes, actually, growing back there. And then here, I've got some squash coming up. You see the squash there coming up? Is it going to focus on that or no? Here we go. Got some squash sprouted. We got one sprouted so far. Hopefully the rest of these will sprout here pretty soon. Keeping the little covers on these. I got a whole bunch of stuff here started. This is just a big variety of different things. And what I do is I just simply, I write right on there. There's tumbling tom tomatoes coming up there. I write right on the thing. So, And then all these here aren't planted yet. We got to get all them done. So those are what's coming in next. Okay, so there's kind of our, uh, our seed collection. And uh, kind of let me show you what I got going on here. I bought some, uh, I bought some potting soil. And I... Uh, I have it in the tub here, and then I've got these pots that Johanna ordered, and then what I do is I, uh, well, hold on, let me stick you in here. There you are, you can sit here with me. You know, you just bust this open, open the bag, you get these pots out. They're a little difficult to separate. <laughs> you know, you got to keep, and when you get down to see when you get down to just two, a little hard to separate. There we go. And then all I do is I just simply uh, take that and, you know, fill it with soil. Just top it right up. Get all the soil in there. So I got a little bowl on top. Take my hand. And just a little bit of compaction. Not much. Just a little bit of compaction in there. Still very loose. And there you go. Now when I put a seed in here, I'll write on the cup what it is. So I can keep track of what I've got started there. So... Hey, quiet down. You can see the puppies out there. Okay. Got my little gorilla cart that I bought the other day. I'm loading firewood, cleaning up the debris out in the yard. I got some tree trimming to do. Hey! Hush up. Quiet. Good dogs. Quiet. It's just a bird in the water dish. There's a bird in the duck's water dish. They don't like it when the birds get in the water dish. Quiet! No. You be quiet. No. No.
that bird do? Did it go in there with the uh, end of the crate? Here yeah, I'm all over. Anyhow, so that's what's going on out there in, in, in the garden world right now. But now let me show you what we got started, what we got going here. I went to the... got too much stuff in my way. I went to the store and I stocked up on a bunch of plants to get us a good start. So we've got a selection of tomatoes and then a bunch of peppers. I got some bay leaf uh, plants here, some bay leaf coming up. And then as you can see here, I've got uh, uh, parsley and some different cabbages, some different basils. I think this is a, looks like a watermelon. Yep, that's a watermelon. I did have a couple losses though. Sad to say, this one here didn't do very well. And no, I guess that one's okay. All right, just, just one, this one here just didn't do very well. It's a market, market more zucchini. Just did not, they did not survive. I don't know why. Everything else is looking beautiful. As you can see here, I got some more cucumbers, some melon. Um, what's that back there? Uh, baby sugar watermelons. Um, collard greens coming up for my daughter-in-law and, uh, Different squish and squash and cabbages and this is this tray here is mostly herbs, you know chives, basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary. So uh, kind of exciting, kind of exciting seeing all this stuff coming up. I got them back here in the corner. Oh, there's more watermelon. Gosh, I guess I got a bunch of watermelon coming up. Maybe I'll actually get a watermelon to eat this year. But yeah, that's all we've got coming up already. So the big push right now. The big push right now is to get the garden ready, and that's what we're going to work on today. I'm going to be moving fencing around for the ducks. Uh, we're going to change the duck fencing, move them over into the side yard. Their fencing is going to then go straight out to the front corner of the property, keep the dogs out of that half of the yard. And then I got a guy coming here in a day or two to rototill for me. So that's going to be our job today, is going to be setting up the duck fencing to isolate them to the corner run the fencing down the center of the yard, move the brush piles, trim up the apple tree, and rake all the debris in the front yard. So, but before I get to that, look how good the chickens are doing. Look at Johanna's chicky babes. The chickies are doing wonderful. They're getting feathers on them. They're just doing great. You know, this stock tank here works just perfect for a brooder for chickens. You know, and, and you notice I have a metal water and a metal feeder. I don't buy plastic. Metal water, metal feeder, got the heat lamp on in there for them. If they're, if they're hot, they stay down at this end where it's cold. If they're cold, they move over here where it's hot. But there's plenty of food and water for them. So. And they're doing great. They're doing absolutely great. Can't complain a bit. <clears throat> on another front. Yeah. Yeah, man. We stocked up on jars getting ready to take whatever yield we get from the garden and be able to put it up this year. So, And we got some changes going on in the garage. All this stuff here, all this stuff here is going to be coming out and going. We're putting shelving here. All those jars are going to be filled full of beautiful food. And they're going to go over there on the shelving. And meanwhile, this other old furniture and stuff here that Doug left and abandoned, a lot of this stuff's going to get thrown out. And we'll uh, have some more room in here to do some stuff. So, kind of what the plan is right now. If I can set you guys down there. There you go. There you go. So exciting times, man. Garden. You know, gardeners are, you know, besides, you know, besides the fact that gardeners are doing God's work, and I, I, I honestly believe that. I honestly believe that gardeners are doing God's work. Gardeners are, are creating order and, and creating life that didn't exist beforehand. And man, if that's not God's work, I don't know what is. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'm excited about being able to put together a, dis, a decent garden this year and be able to raise so many good, healthy foods for our family, especially right now in this time of uh, uncertainty for our country. You know, I went out the other day, that's not gonna fit in 
I went out the other day and tried to buy a chest freezer. We've got one chest freezer filled, hung upright. But I'm concerned about impending food shortages that, that I honestly believe we're going to start seeing a lot more of. Um, and so we wanted to get more, um, some more foods in stock. I actually thought about buying a, buying a pig and butchering it immediately, even though I didn't get to raise it myself. Uh, I can buy one from a farmer that did, did raise one correctly and therefore uh, have some healthy pork. Um, but we can't find a chest freezer. And, you know, that's why we got the canning jars. If you can't freeze stuff, you got to go to other means of storage. So we're going to put stuff up in the canning jars. That's, you know, I don't like doing that for meat, frankly, because it changes the texture and flavor, I think, too much. But um, at least we'll be able to get a big supply of vegetables. And so here's the thing. Whether you believe that we're going to have massive food shortages or not, what does it hurt to put canned goods on the shelf? It's not like they go bad immediately. You're going to buy them in the next year or so anyway. Buy them up now and put them back so you have them. That way, just in case there's a problem down the line, you've got some stuff behind you and are prepared. So, And that's what we're doing. We're putting in a big garden, and we're stocking the freezers full of meat, and we got the canning jars for putting stuff up, and we've been buying a bunch of canned goods at the stores. We're going to put some shelving up here in the garage and fill that and um, try to prepare ourselves for a possible... I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a doomsday type person. Um, but, you know, for the possibility, the possibility that there may be some more severe food shortages. And if it's not from this COVID-19 thing, you know, what else, what's the next thing that could affect it? Nobody thought COVID-19 could make this much of an impact in our lives. And yet, here we are. So, all right, well, kids, I got to get to work. I got to start putting some fencing and stuff up. Hope you guys will follow along while I'm doing that.
them toad suckers. Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them mugger toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in they mouth. I be a toad sucker, don't want to duck it. You just find an old toad and you rear back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye. Hey kids, Grandpa here. I am thrilled to bring out a great healthy product like my own goat milk soap. Designed and manufactured from the safest and finest ingredients I could find, my soaps contain olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, and of course goat's milk. Goat's milk soap will not dry out your skin like many other soaps. This is important in keeping skin naturally moisturized to keep it healthy. Prices and ordering information are in the description down below. Thanks for trying Grandpa's Farms Goat Milk Soaps. Remember, 100% money back guarantee.